everyone. Thanks so much for watching our Brain Booster this week on SAP Business One, The Payment Wizard. My name is Shannon Kennedy, and I'm a CSM here at VistaView Solutions. Let's face it, making outgoing payments are never fun, and they're certainly the least amount of fun when you have to enter manual outgoing payments one by one. SAP Business One has a great solution for that, and it's called the Payment Run Wizard. This allows you to create a payment run for bulk outgoing payments via ACH or check, and you can save that payment run to be used in the future to further make your outgoing payment process even more efficient. So today we're going to be reviewing the steps to create a payment run. In your standard SAP Business One system, underneath your banking option here, you have your standard outgoing payment option, which allows you to issue outgoing payments per vendor manually but we also see our payment wizard. The payment wizard is what's gonna save us some time. It is always recommended and needed to use the payment wizard to make sure that you also have your outgoing payment options set up in SAP Business One. This could include cash, check, or ACH, and setting up your vendors, of course, is always necessary as well. So the first step to our payment wizard is just simply giving you some generalized information on using your payment wizard. Our next option is going to allow us to create this brand new payment wizard run. Once we're done using our payment wizard, we we'll also have the option to save this payment run. This will allow you and anyone else in your team with accounting and payment options authorizations to run a payment run wizard whenever they need based upon those set parameters that you know are already correct inside your system. So for our first option, of course, we're going to make a new payment run because it's the first time we're doing that in our B1 system. We're going to hit next, and it's going to give us our option for naming and setting the first set of parameters for our payment run. You can see here, SAP Business One automatically gives your payment run a name. However, we can simply delete that information here and name this payment wizard run whatever we want. This can be done using your test system, of course, and you can make multiple tests to see what works best for you and your team. I'm going to simply name this one Shannon's Payment Run. My payment run date is today. You can also set a payment run to run in the future. And setting my next payment run date will allow this saved payment run when we're finished to run again at a scheduled date in the future. For now, we're just going to leave our payment run date as seen as today, 4-5. Our payment types are going to be outgoing today, and it's going to be by check. You see here that you can also do payment runs for your incoming payments, and your bank transfer options is your ACH options. You have the option to do your payment order numbering series here, which is automatically defaulted to your primary numbering series, which is set up in your configuration time for your SAP Business One system. But if you have any questions or concerns, you can talk, certainly speak to your admin team or your SAP Business One partner regarding additional numbering series or simply additional information regarding the number series that you're using. If you have additional number series, you'd simply click your drop down arrow there and you'd be able to see options here. You also have the option to set a minimum payment amount for your payments. If you'd like to do so, you can certainly do that, but it is a good idea to make sure that that information is correct with your CFO or your accounting controller. For us, we don't wanna set a minimum payment because we wanna make sure that we see all the recommended payments to be made to our vendors and then create the checks to pay those vendors. My payment due date is going to be based upon my payment run date, which is today. However, you can also set the payment date based upon your document due date, and in which case it will be utilizing your AP document due date seen in your SAP Business One documents. My next option here, I can select all or simply some of my vendor records. If I leave my codes here blank, it will simply allow the system to look at all of my business partners.
However, if I want to simply do a range or two or three vendors, I can simply use my drop down button here to search through my records and select who I'd like to use. You can also run a payment by vendor group. If you have your vendor group set up, if you use your drop down arrow here, it will allow you to select your vendor groups. We want to run and catch all of our payments not dependent upon vendor group, so we're going to leave that option as all. You also have the option to include vendor debit and customer credit balances and vendor or credit with zero balance information. If we check on our expanded selection criteria, we also have the option to allow some additional information to be included in our payment runs. This is something that could work very well if you want to see clients that are using 1099s, for example, or you want to see any other option in SAP that's not readily available in your selection criteria window. So, since we've decided to include all of our vendors, I am simply going to select Add to List. This is going to automatically add every vendor to our list here. And you'll see that the business partner balance will be shown here in both your system currency and foreign currency if you're using multiple currencies in your SAP Business One database. We'll show you the business partner code as well as the business partner name. And if we scroll all the way down, we'll see that automatically all of these vendors are checked because we are not limiting what we're seeing. If, however, you want to leave any of your vendors off, you simply have the option to uncheck them here and then they will not be included in your payment run. Now let's select next in our payment run. And this is going to bring up our document parameters options. This is going to allow us to define the open transactions that are included in our payment run. You have the option to select priority based upon your posting date on your document, your due date, your pay to details, and your cash discount. I'm going to use the default due date because I want to make sure that I'm catching the due date. And normally when you're running your payment runs, you're running them based upon document due date and when your payments are due to your vendors. You have the options to further define information for your documents here as well including additional information with due date and posting date ranges, cash discounts, tolerance in days, which means when is this due, minimum discounts, balances due, document numbers, if you know the exact group or document number that you'd like to run a payment for exactly, as well as blanket agreements, which include your blanket agreements for your vendors. On the bottom of our screen here, we see two options to include manual journal entries and also include negative transactions within positive BP balances. These are automatically selected, but you do have the option to deselect each of these. I'm going to leave those checked because I want to be able to see if there's any manual journal entries against any vendors that could possibly need a payment. And I want to make sure I also see negative transactions if they exist. I'm going to click Next. And you see I got a red bar error message because I forgot to enter my due date. I'm going to match my due date with our posting date as well. And the reason that obviously I needed to enter in my due date is because I'm selecting my priority for my AP documents by due date. Once I select Next, it's going to allow me to show payment methods that are set up within the system. So our payment methods are related to our GL accounts, as you can see here. You can drill into anywhere that you see a golden arrow during your payment run, and you can open up to see additional information. So we see that the list of our payment methods here are our outgoing checks, and our outgoing bank transfers. So we wanted to select outgoing checks only because we didn't want to select ACH or bank transfers in this initial payment run. So I'm simply going to select my outgoing checks GL account here and click Next. 
Now, because I have multiple currencies set up, it is going to ask me for exchange rates that, that will relate to those currencies. If I'm set up to receive automated exchange rates updates, this will automatically enter in my exchange rates here. Or if I'm set up to manually enter them, like you see here, I simply have to enter in my exchange rates and update the system as I'm doing my payment runs. Once you've completed all of your exchange rates based upon the documents and which exchange rates they're using, foreign currency, it's going to now open up my recommendation report. Your recommendation report is what allows you to see all of the payments in the system that will be run and selected for your check run for your vendors based upon the criteria that you've selected so far. You'll be able to see your currency in the, in the last column here. You'll also be able to see that our payment method, because we've selected in our criteria check, is our outgoing checking account, which means that it will create an outgoing check for all of these vendors. If you see something unusual here, or you know that you want to leave off any of these vendors or outgoing payments, you can simply deselect, and it will not issue the outgoing payment for that option. If you want to see additional information on this recommendation report, you also have the option to use your drop-down arrows here, and it will show you the documents associated with those payments and those vendors. In the bottom left of your screen, you also have the option to see your total outgoing payment amount. The total outgoing payment amount, of course, is very important because you never want to overdraw your checking account. So if you also see that this number here is more than you may have to cover your expenses for your outgoing payments, you'd simply deselect options here so that you can ensure that you're not overdrawing the information that you have in your checking account or the total dollar value that you have there. You can also add a manual row here if you know that there's something that was missed based upon your parameters that you'd like to add. Adding in a manual row will simply allow you to search the system for an additional vendor payment to add to your payment run. I want to create payments for all of those documents. So I simply click Next, and now I'm on my Save Options. This is where you're allowed to save your payment run information so that every time you or someone else on your accounting team is running your payment wizard, you can simply use your saved run and it will automatically use all of the selection criteria in your saved run and run your payment and create your checks for payment. You also have the option to save recommendations, which means it will not run your payment wizard, but it will save the recommendations shown so that you can go back to them later. That's needed if you have any questions or concerns, or maybe the account balance will overdraw your checking account, but you still want to make payments for those invoices. So you're going to save your recommendations, make updates to your checking account, and then run your payment wizard. So we are going to execute our payment run. We'll simply click next. It's going to allow me to execute my payment wizard, which is going to generate my documents or my outgoing payments. And of course, I want that because we need that in our B1 system to match up with the outgoing payments that we're creating. Now the system is simply running and creating our payments. This saves you a lot of time when you're working with multiple payments needed at one time. Like I mentioned earlier, you can always do a one-off payment for your vendors on a case-by-case -case basis, but utilizing and saving your payment run information will really help your accounts team. And it's also a really good training exercise for your other team members as well. On our payment run summary here, which will automatically open up once you run your payment run, it's going to show your payment run summary for the check run that we just did. So our payment run summary here shows 14 payments were added and 14 checks were added with zero bank transfers. Again, because we only selected to do our check run today. You also have the option here on the right side of your screen to show a little bit of information on the payments that you run today for a report.
you can show information regarding these outgoing payments and the checks here. And this will show you all of the information here regarding the checks that were made for the outgoing payments. You can also see a payment summary, which will allow you to look up and see all of the payment information regarding this check run. It's going to show your bank account information and the check number information here as well. It will also show you the number of documents that were related to this outgoing payment. Once we've finished and we know that all of our information is correct, we also have the option to print our report. Printing the report is great if you need to give the information regarding this payment run to the rest of your accounting team, or perhaps just to your CFO so that they can double check and have the information on hand for all of the checks that you've just created in the system. If you don't need a report, then you simply, simply click finish here. And now your executed payment run is completed. Now, if we open back up our payment wizard, we have the option to see previously loaded and or saved payment wizards. So we didn't save our payment wizard. That means that when we load our payment run here, we won't see it on our screen. But that doesn't mean it was lost and that we can't save it the next time. Simply click view executed payment runs and we'll see our payment run here. Then we have the option to utilize this again by choosing go to final step. And then we can save that as well to be used in the future now that we know that it's a great payment run to use for your team and it's the correct parameters. As always, thank you again for joining us for our Brain Booster this week. And if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us direct at VistaView Solutions or reach out directly to your SAP Business One partner. Thank you again. Have a great day.